Hello and welcome to episode one of Cart with me, Sim. I apologise in advance for any of the random sounds that you'll hear on this podcast, but bear with me, I have limited equipment to make this podcast and I really want wanted to make this podcast, so I really hope you enjoy it without the, um, even though there, were, there may be some strange sounds, so sorry in advance. <laughs> Um, For my first episode, I had a lot of trouble deciding on what to talk about because I didn't know whether to start on something from the past, something from the present. I've seen a lot of Korean dramas and variety shows and also I'm aware of a lot of individuals in the Korean entertainment scene, so I didn't really know where to start. But I finally decided on one and it is a great drama that has had many high reviews. And it is one of those dramas that I think I would definitely watch again on repeat. And this drama is known as True Beauty, or in Korean, it is known as Yoshin Gangrim. So, this drama is based on the webtoon artist ya- Yaongi, I think I said that right. Her real name is Kim Na Young. And you can check out her Instagram, it's at meow91 underscore. And she is very active on there. And she is a very pretty individual, if you want to check that out. So, let's start with the webtoon first. So, I have read about the first 20 to 30 episodes of the webtoon. And it's still ongoing, so it's still been... There's still episodes being released for this webtoon. And you can check this out on the webtoon app or on the webtoon website. I think all you really need is an account, I think, or you might not need an account, you probably have to check that out, I can't remember. But her webtoon was very well written and drawn out. The art in there is incredible and the episodes go on and they're really enticing. It's a really good web, 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 it's a really good webtoon, sorry I can't get my words out. And the one thing I like about this webtoon is that um, she involves Korean internet memes um, on some of her artwork and some of the art that she does. And I find that very hilarious. And it's something that makes it a bit more unique to the audience. And I'm very proud of this author and how far she's come because... Um, she deserved the fact that this got made into a drama because it is a really good webtoon. Even though the webtoon doesn't strictly, sorry, even though the drama doesn't strictly follow the webtoon, the webtoon itself is great and so is the drama by itself. They're both great individually, even though they're not meant to copy exactly how the webtoon plays out. So let's move on to the drama of this of this of true beauty so starting with the cast and crew this is written by the author Lee Seon she also wrote the drama top star you Beck, if you've heard of that drama and this is also directed by Kim Sang Hyop who also wrote sorry not wrote directed extraordinary you that is another drama that I very much enjoyed but more on that later if I get to it. The cast of this drama is is great. It's something that I was very excited to watch because of the cast and because of the storyline. I remember when they announced the cast in news articles and I was very, 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 very excited to watch this drama. And I'm glad it turned it played out well. So there's firstly Moon Ga Young and she plays the main character Lim Ju Kyung. This actress also appears in the dramas Heartstrings. I remember first seeing her in Heartstrings and she was very young then, but she's also in the drama Tempted, another drama that I saw her in and I thought, wow, she is so beautiful. And she's also in Welcome to Waikiki too. Next we have the actor Chaonu. He is a member of the group Astro. They have some good songs. One of my favourite songs in Astro is 
all night. I have that on repeat all the time. He's also a member of the one of the members in Master in the House and Master in the House is another variety show that I very much enjoy. More on that later. And he's also played some other dramas, for example My Ideas Young and Beauty, Hit the Top and Rocky Story. The next main actor we have is is Hwang in Hyo and he plays Han Seo Jin. And when I first researched this actor, he's fairly new to the acting scene. I think he's only been acting for about two years, but he's been a model. But he is only 30 years old. And he does not, does not look 30. It's mad. Um, that shocked me a lot. I probably shock a lot of you lot too. And another actress in this who's well known is Park Yuna, who plays Kang Soo Jin. She also appears in My, De My Ideas Gangnam Beauty as well, and also in Sky Castle, a very highly rated drama that came out a couple of years ago, as well as Hotel de Luna. So, moving on to the plot. I'm sorry for my lip smacking. It's a bit hard to talk. This is my first time talking, but... Um, and it's by myself as well, which makes it even more challenging. So the plot of this drama is that Lim Joo Kyung, the main, the main, the main character, she's bullied at school for the acne on her face, and oh my gosh, I really, absolutely hate bullying scenes, and ones that they're, they're always prevalent in Korean dramas, and oh, it just makes my heart hurt because of how. Of how sad it is. They really, they really make it. Oh, I don't know. It's just, it's just really sad to me. But um, we're introduced to the story where she's being bullied for the acne on her face, and the bullies obviously were being mean to her. Um, and then, involving her family life, I think, yes, her father ends up being scammed by an individual, and they the whole family ends up moving to their old neighbourhood and their old house. So this is where she starts school fresh again and she has a new start to reinvent herself. And in reinventing herself she decided to learn how to use makeup and how to cover up her acne essentially. Um, and even though it's probably not the best way to go about acne, um, it's part of the storyline so it, it does a good job. So she learns how to do makeup and when she starts up, up at this new school she ends up being um, very well known and popular because of her looks and it's a complete 360, 360 turn on, on her school life and um, after she's introduced to the school Starting at the school, she makes friends with Kang Soo Jin and also Choi Soo Ha. Um, them two are her best friends in this. Um, and then, Lim Joo Kyung first comes across um, Lee Soo Ho before she starts at this new school. So she meets him on top of a rooftop while she was really upset by being bullied by the bullies from her old school and even though she can't see well because her, her vision is really bad as well she wears glasses and contact lenses in in her new school she doesn't know exactly who is who saved her essentially because she got pulled off the rooftop um so we later find out that's Lisa Ho and Lisa Ho is um a character who gets involved with, Lee, with um, gets involved with um, I've got name, Lim Joo Kyung, who gets involved um, with Lim Joo Kyung straight away, and we see from the past that they have history together. They used to come to this comic book store, and they would read comics together. So they, I think Lee Soo Ho was the first one to find out that that he. Um, he that they'd met before in the past when they were younger and oh this is going to be a spoiler but 
probably this whole podcast is a spoiler actually, but um, Lee's, uh, Lee's, when Lee Suho um, has to leave at the end, she, um, Lim Ju Kyung comes to the comic book store and it's written on the wall that Lee Suho wrote down that, oh, when will you remember me? That really broke my heart because he wasn't there and she only realised at that po- point in time that Lee Su Ho was someone that she met in the past as a child. So that's Lee Su Ho. He comes into the story and he's really involved with them. I think um, at the start he doesn't realise that Lin Ju Kyung is the girl he met on the roof but then he finally figures it out after there was a transaction of some sort and um, he figures it out by himself basically. And then we have um, Han Sol Jun, who is um, very helpful to his mother, as we soon come to find out. But he is a bit of a rebel, um, although he's not that bad, I don't think. And he ends up meeting Lim Ju Kyung after they collided together while he was on his motorcycle. And she runs off with his helmet, and so that's great, just running off with the random person's helmet but she returns it later because they find out that they go to the same school and also their their mothers are friends as well which was even more hilarious one of my favorite scenes is when um, Lim Ju Kyung is in her mum's beauty salon and she's applying on a face mask and the face mask is um, while she puts on this face mask I can't remember how. Oh yes, I remember now. Like, so she comes into the beauty salon to put on a to um get her face ready for a date or of some sort of thing. I think it was a date. Um, and um, Han Seo Jun walks into the shop with his mother, and Lim Ju Kyung realizes that it's Han Seo Jun. So she ends up like painting her face with this face mask, and then she tries to hide by lying on the on the bed on one of the salon beds, but. The bed collapses and she just rolls out in front of them. That scene was very hilarious and very memorable indeed. Um, but yeah, um, Han So Jun ends up falling in love with Lin Ju Kung from from the beginning. And I have to say, second lead syndrome was very big in this drama. I was, I felt, I felt very sad for Han So Jun and Lee Su Ho and. They're both just really cute, and they're just, oh, I wouldn't be able to choose if I was in that situation. But, um, yes, this um, drama does have a happy ending, which is great, and something that I always love in Korean dramas, having a happy ending, you know. And so I'm going to move on to the next section of this podcast, which is the meaningful points of this drama. So we first come to the drama to find out that bullying is at the forefront of the way the story turns and bullying is a big problem everywhere, not not even in South Korea, it's a big problem everywhere and it's really upsetting to see that um, children get bullied for their looks, especially during puberty because that's at a stage where you don't know what your body's going through. So it always breaks my heart when I see bullying scenes. I said this earlier, but it's so upsetting. Um, then we have um, Lim Lim. Oh, I keep forgetting how to say name. Lim Ju Kyung's family. Lim Ju Kyung's family are very very cute in this drama. I cannot stress that enough. This family was just so adorable. So we first um know of the mother who's basically at the forefront of the family steering the family into safe into safer waters and she's basically earning the money and then we have the father who is a bit um who's a bit silly and is always making mistakes and spending money where he shouldn't be right at the start we realize that they've been scammed because of the father but he is a very nice father to all of his children and he's always looking out for them and even when the mother is telling off Lim Ju Kyung he's always out there to protect her which I find absolutely adorable. Next we have her brother, Lim Ju Kyung's brother Lim Ju Young, 
who again is very supportive of Lim Ji Kyung and I find it adorable how he ends up falling in love with Han So Jun's sister after Lim Ji Kyung helps out his sister, um, Han So Jun's sister and um, he ends up just following her around up until they graduate school pretty much which I find absolutely adorable. <laughs> um, then we have the older sister, Lim Hee Kyung. Oh my god, this character. I loved this character so much. She's she's got a bold she's she's a bold character. And she's one of my favourites in this drama. Um it's just her whole storyline in this is just really hilarious and funny and I think she has the best plot in this story. So you we begin with um Lim Hee Kyung the old sister of Lim Ji, Lim Ji Kyung and we realise she's in a stable in a stable job and she's obviously um, studied a lot to get to where she was and she's working for the company that Lee Soo Ho's dad owns. She ends up finding or getting into a relationship with Lim Ju Kyung's homeroom teacher when I think she meets him, she sees him across the street when she's having coffee. And when they get into a relationship, it's even more hilarious because Lim Ji Kyung's home, uh, homeroom teacher um, is very different. So we realise that the gender roles between the, the, this couple have been switched. And oh my god, I found it so hilarious the, the way the story unfolded between the two of them. And um, my favourite part in terms of their storyline was when um, they were trying on wedding dress. Um, she was trying on her wedding dress, and and the home teacher was find, was trying on his his suits. And Limmy Kyung was very relaxed about the whole situation and couldn't really care less about what she wears to her her own wedding. So she decided on the first dress she she looked at. But obviously, the home teacher he was more more specific about what he wanted and he, want, he wanted to spend more time and it, it's an evident example of the gender roles being switched and um, so he shows um, Lee Mi Kyung his first suit and she doesn't seem bothered but she was like yes this is the one yep that's great whatever and then he says to her I want you to have a better reaction because I don't think you're trying enough in in um, choosing out our wedding outfits and she was like fine yeah okay I'll, I'll do that so then they introduce he introduces his um his second piece but and she puts on a and Limi Kyung just stands up and is like, Oh yes, yes, this is the one and she ends up like really being um exaggerating the fact that oh yeah, this is the suit. And um he he was just like, No, this is the exact same one that I just show you. I found that so funny and um yeah. That that was a a poignant moment for me. And um the last thing I think is sort of prevalent in the drama, but but it's not that it's not that deeply deeply gone into. But um, we try to understand what the what the what the students want in their life and what passions they want in their life and what they want to complete in their life in their life. For example, Lim Ju Kyung, she is a individual who doesn't get the highest of grades. But she but she has started this journey of make of doing makeup and it, she really likes it so she wants to go to makeup college and as always the mother is against it because she wants her to have a more stable stable in quotation marks um more stable um education and going to a good university and it's only later on when Lim Ju Kyung is bullied at her new school that her mother finally understands that makeup is really important to her and lets her carry out her dream and tries to tries to make her feel happy and that made my heart melt because it was it was sad seeing Lim Ju Kung struggle in a family and you you could see that she was struggling as well because of all the I'm not stereotyping but um of um of the fact that she was always um she was always listening to heavy metal music and she was more to herself in terms of showing her emotions to her family members but her family members really didn't really think much of it and um, 
when she starts doing makeup and her mother supports it, it's it's very heartwarming and I just wanted you to um, tell Lim Ji Kyung, oh yes, you can do it, you can do it. And another character who's trying to sort out what they want in life is is um is oh, I've forgotten his name. Lee Su Ho, that's it, Lee Su Ho. So Lee Su Ho um is very clever, but um we realise there's a he's very good at making music and even though his his father is in charge of a entertainment company his father doesn't even know it himself that he wants to do music, and his father's his father has done has done a lot of wrongdoings. So Lisa Ho doesn't really want anything to do with him, but it's nice to see that he and starts to do music as well. The same goes with Han So Jun. Han So Jun first comes into the story as an ex trainee because he was training with I think he was training with their late friend um, and he stopped training because of the fact that his friend commits suicide and it's very sad to see how he gave up on his dream because of his friend and the way that he was treated but um, it's also great to see how Lee Soo Ho was pushing Han Seo Jun to, to just do his dream and tells him to just sing on that stage right at, at the end of the end of the drama. That was very heartwarming as well. I really liked the fact that they were trying they were actually they were all seeing what they wanted in life. Again, second lead syndrome was so big on this one. I felt so upset when um when Han So Jun um, told Lim uh, Lim Ju Kyung that um Lee Su Ho is, is um going back to going back to America so so he's not gonna see you again and when you let her go, oh my god. And when you cried on the stairs, I was crying there with him. It was so sad. Um, but the ending to this drama was very happy, nice and wholesome, which is very, which is great. I, I love a happy ending. And the last topic I have on this podcast for this drama series is the OST. OSTs are what make the drama. I love the music that they put into Korean dramas and I just, I don't understand why other dramas in different areas don't do it. They have such good soundtracks. Like I would love to be a part of making a soundtrack for a drama or a show because they, oh, I feel like it just brings the emotions more. So the OST in this drama includes singers such as Yuju from um, Yota Chingu or, or G-Friend. There's also Car the Garden and Saya. Sunjay, and also we have some of the actors singing Chao Nu and Hwang and Hop as well. Some of my favourite songs in this were the first song that I heard was um, Starlight by Chani of SF9, or also known as Kuriyum, and this song was very cute. I think it was more poignant because of the fact that it was the mystery song that no one knew, um, no one knew who, no one knew who wrote it, but it was sung by their late friend. Um, there's also a very big song that's um, called I'm in the Mood for Dancing. It's sung by Yuji of Yoda Chingu, but the original song comes from the Nolans, which, orig- which are a girl group from Ireland slash England, and I found that very, very cute, that um, a song all the way from England, Ireland, or the UK was... Um, was covered and that was very nice. I also love the song um, I'm Missing You by Sanjay, that was very uh, poignant as well as Love So Fine by Chanu. and also the song that Hwang and Sop sings at the end on stage, I think it's it starts today or Onur Boto Shijak and Gor, that song was very cute as well. So the OST for this was I'd say a very a, a decent one and um, there's some great singers in this OST and again you can check out the OST on on various different platforms if you want to listen to it. I personally love listen, listening to OSTs when I'm um, relaxing or when I'm in a more sad mood. 
<laughs> which happens. Um, so yeah, that's everything for this podcast, for this episode one. I really hoped you enjoyed listening to it and I want to know your thoughts on this drama or other shows or dramas you would like me to discuss. You can listen to this podcast on SoundCloud and hopefully Spotify and Apple Podcasts too and it's under the name Cart Podcast. And don't forget to follow us on Instagram. The handle is Cart Podcast as well. You can drop a comment on SoundCloud as well as Instagram and give your views on this podcast as well as um, your views on Korean dramas and anything of the sort or just, you know, just send me a quick hello to see like, you know, it's always nice to just talk to people anyway or generally. You can also leave a nice review on Apple Podcasts if this comes out on Apple Podcasts. And um, that's all for this episode. I said that like three times, but yeah, I really hope you enjoyed episode one and I will be back soon with another episode with more juicy Korean drama and variety show talks and discussions. So, see you soon. Bye-bye.